Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this SciShow video. As a SciShow viewer, you can keep building your STEM skills with a 30-day free trial and 20% off an annual premium subscription at brilliant.org slash scishow. In 1959, humanity learned that the giant gray orb hanging in our sky is two-faced. The near side of the moon, the one facing us, has a thin crust covered with large frozen lava seas called maria. Meanwhile, the far side looks completely different. It has a much thicker crust and almost no maria. But over six decades later, we still haven't managed to pin down why. To solve this mystery, scientists have come up with some pretty cool hypotheses. From radioactivity to one moon eating another, here are a few potential reasons why our natural satellite looks so strange. For a thing that happens on a microscopic level, radioactivity can have some pretty huge effects. And not just in a supervillain origin story kind of way. Meet Procellarium Creep or just creep. It's a terrain that's found only on the near side of the moon, and it's defined by high concentrations of potassium, because in chemistry a K stands for potassium, rare earth elements, and phosphorus. Some of that potassium is radioactive, but creep also contains a substantial amount of thorium and uranium, which are a little more famous for being unstable little atoms. And if you pack a bunch of radioactivity into one patch of rock, you can get some interesting effects. For example, creep can lower the melting point of the material around it. It's not quite the same mechanism, but it accomplishes the same effect as throwing salt on an icy sidewalk. Combine this drop in melting point with the fact that radioactive elements also release heat as they decay, and it means the moon's creep could have helped keep some nearby rock molten. And after that molten rock bubbled up and out of a volcano or flowed onto the surface after a big space rock punched through the crust, it could solidify into maria. Since creep is only on the moon's near side, that could explain why almost all of its maria are there too. But why is creep only on the near side, and why is the crust on that side so much thinner? Well, back when the moon was young, its insides had these giant currents of churning rock known as convection currents. Warmer rock near the core rose up toward the surface, cooling as it went, and then started sinking and warming back up rinse and repeat. The same thing is happening inside the Earth right now. But sometimes, and it can happen for no apparent reason, these convection currents can go lopsided and produce something called tilted convection. Some scientists hypothesize that this could have happened to our baby moon. And however the tilt got started, the wonky convection currents may have shifted themselves to match the moon's orientation relative to Earth. See, the reason why we have this consistent view of the moon is because it's tidally locked. It's spinning at just the right speed to keep one side pointed our way, at all times. And this locking happened pretty early on in the moon's history. So the near side was kept hot by a new molten earth blasting a bunch of heat towards it, while the far side got to cool down. That temperature difference flowing from near side to far side could have shifted the lopsided convection currents to match. And because they're lopsided, the currents would have started dragging material away from the hot near side, where it was easier for rocks to stay molten, over to the cooler far side where some of them could solidify. Meanwhile, the stuff that didn't solidify as easily, including potassium, potassium, rare earth metals, and phosphorus made up the leftovers that could form the crust on the near side. So tilted convection could be one way that the moon ended up with a thin, creepy crust on one side and a thicker, creepless crust on the opposite. Underneath that solid crust, there was a cooling but still molten mantle. So on the near side, a meteorite could have punched right through the thin crust and caused magma to bubble up and create maria. Meanwhile, if a meteorite hit the far side's thick, tough crust, it wouldn't make it through. You'd just get craters and the far side definitely has plenty of those. But even without tilted convection on the inside of the moon, the temperature difference between the near side and far side could have been enough to make our moon two-faced. Astronomers have another hypothesis that looks at how the asymmetry grew from a baby moon's atmosphere, which was filled with vaporized rock. It was that hot. We're pretty sure the moon was made about 4.5 billion years ago when a not quite so finished Earth had a cosmic collision with another protoplanet. So basically, all of the moon's rocky bits started off as a hot liquidy blob until they cooled down. But some bits were hot enough to hover around that blob as a gas. And over time, some of this gas would make its way over to the cooler far side, condense into rocky rain, and eventually build up a solid thick crust. Different minerals have different temperatures where they become 
cool enough to condense, so stuff chock full of aluminum and calcium was more likely to rain down onto the far side. Meanwhile, the elements in creep tend to stay vaporized at lower temperatures, so as with the tilted convection hypothesis, they end up as the leftovers forming the near side's crust. But maybe the moon looks like it does because it ate a smaller moon? Scientists are pretty sure that at least three bodies collapsed out of the debris cloud created by Earth's hit and run. The Earth, and at least two moons of different sizes. And it's also likely these two moons crashed into each other to make the one we know and love today. Most of the research investigating this hypothesis has the smaller moon smash into the larger one at high speed. But in 2011, one team proposed it could have been a slow crash, where the smaller moon just sort of blooped into the other. Well, it's technically called accretion of a companion, but bloop is just more fun to say. This blooping would have deposited a bunch of new material onto one side of the moon, where it would have cooled, hardened, and become a thick crust. That side wasn't necessarily the far side at the time, but it created such a wonky distribution of mass that over many years, the gravitational interactions with the Earth would have caused it to settle into becoming the moon's super thick backside. But wait, there's more! The slow crash would also have pushed whatever didn't solidify on the far side toward the near side, including all the creep. We've been trying to figure out why the moon is the way it is for a long time, and there are even more hypotheses than the ones we've covered here. And one of the biggest hurdles is getting our hands on actual lunar samples. We have some, but not nearly enough to really dig in and answer all of the questions that we have. But we are in luck. Humans are set to head back to the moon as part of NASA's Artemis program. And they will bring back a plethora of new samples in the coming years. Moon rocks for everyone. Someday, we'll solve the mystery of the moon's two-faced nature, and in the meantime, we can look up and admire the one that it keeps turned toward us. And in my opinion, that's definitely its good side. Now, in preparation for those exciting Artemis findings, you can take the brilliant course Real Engineering to learn all about rocket launches, orbits, and material science that sends missions like that to the moon and back. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform with thousands of lessons in science, computer science, and math and we're so happy to have their continued support for yet another SciShow video. And rocket science is awesome, because it helps us answer these moon mysteries, but also because it sits at the intersection of math, chemistry, engineering, physics, and pretty much all of the stuff that Brilliant helps you learn. In this course, the Brilliant people at Brilliant have taken one of the most complicated topics ever, I mean, it is rocket science, and distilled it into just six lessons. And you can probably complete six lessons in less than a month, which would make this course free for SciShow viewers, like you, because Brilliant is giving you your first 30 days for free. After that, you can take 20% off an annual premium Brilliant subscription by clicking the link in the description down below, or just by going to brilliant.org scishow.